Here is a resume that got this developer a job at Google for $300,000. And in this video today, we're gonna break it down for you step by step with nine different steps. So let's just go. This is a Medium article written by Alexander Wynn. So if you wanna read that yourself, I've linked it down below and he's made a YouTube video on it too, which I've linked down in the description below. This is his resume. Don't worry, I'll show it again later so you don't have to screenshot it. But now let's actually go through all of the steps that he's added in here. Step number one, don't repeat yourself. So this is a really good point that he's making here. He's like, hey, don't go more than four bullet points. So I noticed this a lot with people doing where they will repeat one thing over a long period of time. I used APIs and I also did this with APIs and then I did this other thing with APIs. Instead of repeating that you have used APIs over and over again, you could spend the rest of the time talking about maybe that you did server side or did you do front end or did you use Firebase or SQL and you can talk about different parts of the stack you're using. That way you don't have to ever repeat yourself because that is wasted space. We use that to fluff it up but it's not necessary, just keep it moving. So for example, if we actually take a look at his resume here, first under ninjaprep.io, he talks about how he utilized Nginx to reverse proxy IP address on DigitalOcean host. So he says thing number one, and then he gives you a completely different thing number two, which is I use style components for 99% of the styling. So now he's not repeating himself and giving you a breath of multiple different things. Okay, number two, talk about people. So he goes, my Google manager always reminded me that he offered me a role because of my experience working with product managers and UX designers. Mention your experience working with cross-functional teams. So people are hiring you because of your experience of working with others. For example, when I hire somebody on my team, not only do I need to know that you're good at creating content, I also wanna know that you're good at working with other members on the team. So if I have you working with a producer of content, are you gonna do a good job or not? Just like that, if I hire a software developer on my team, which I do quite often, I need to know if you can communicate with the rest of my team because I have software developers that just live in a cave, code by themselves, never actually communicate anything to anybody that causes massive problems, frictions, and bottlenecks because other people will end up duplicating the work that this developer was doing. Communication leads to massive problems. So people on your team need to know and have experience, preferably having communicated with others. So please on your resume, do that as well. Number three, talk about impact. The impact is why the bullet matters. So what he means by this is show how what you do actually helps other people. And if you can get objective with it, meaning you can add metrics or stats, do that. So if you've helped somebody increase or make an extra bit of money with what you've accomplished, share that. Or if the software you use helps many other daily users uh, use the software, share those numbers. So for example, he shares these numbers where he's like recovered Saudi Arabia checkout failure impacting 4,000 customers. That's awesome. Uh, help do something that reduced cost by about $25 million. Fantastic. Uh, added iframes for credit cards and bank accounts to secure 80% of all consumer traffic and prevent CSRF. So all of it is telling you specifically what he's achieved with actual objective data. So add that in when you're building your resume. Okay, point number four is please format it. If the resume is painful to look at or the spacing is bad, it doesn't really matter how much experience you have if it's not inviting the user, a reader to um, make it easier for them to read it. So if we look at his resume right here, you can see that it is easy to look at and it's relaxed. Now, one thing I often see people do is like, they dump their skills here and then they make like skills like 50 or 100 keywords and they just spam the shit out of it. That's not necessary. You're just taking up so much useful space. Nobody cares. Like anybody can just write in 500,000 skills in here. So this is kind of irrelevant, honestly. 
So it's better to put that at the bottom and, and just directly go into what you've done for other people, especially if you have done that. And if you haven't done that, then just get straight into your projects because you can say all the skills in the world, but if I'm reading your project and I don't see that it says Redux somewhere, that you have used Redux, I know that this part is bullshit because I'm like, I can I can read with my own eyes that you have not used Redux here, so I'm not sure if you have experience with Redux. But if your projects have used it, then I know that you have. So keep that in mind as you're writing this. Just get straight to the point, and then the formatting will kind of work itself out. All right, now here, he actually makes a very interesting point. So experience is greater than completion. So no, you do not have to have, it's okay for you to not have a project 100% completed on your resume, it's more important that they know that you've worked on it without it being completed. So leading a project halfway still counts as leading a project. So if you've led a project for somebody or you've done your own project and you did it halfway, don't be shy of sharing it because you can still share it. They could still look at it, the GitHub code or whatnot, and you can still talk about it in the interview. They would bring it up. So use that to your advantage. All right, um, here's the next thing. So use recognizable words. So for example, say software engineer, which is something that everybody already knows and understands, instead of using software development engineer, because nobody knows what those might be. And then if you go to like the job responsibilities, the same thing. So don't use company exclusive titles that nobody uses. Don't use things like front end UX software engineer one, uh, because if you work at you know Netflix or these companies, you'll be like level one engineer or level three, whatever. Those might be company specific. There aren't something globally understood. So keep it simple and just go software engineer. That's the very mindful thing to do. All right, let's keep going. So there we go. So here is an example, right? Software engineer. Just simple, keep it simple. You don't have to keep, keep make it complicated or make it specific to each company. And this is just a global phenomenon. This is not resume specific. This is people specific using recognizable words. So when you're watching Instagram Reels or YouTube or TikTok, whatever content you're watching, you'll notice you will tend to watch simpler things faster. They'll get your attention more. Simplicity always makes us hooked. And then from there, things get more complex. Even if you go to buy something or you see an ad, you're more likely to buy where they're using simpler words that you can understand, that you already have an understanding of. You don't actually have to bring out the definition and understand what that is. If you ever find yourself reading a book or listening to an article, if you hit a couple of words that you don't understand, oftentimes you'll find yourself just bouncing and not reading it anymore. What you won't do is open up a dictionary and like look at it. Sometimes, but not really. So going back to this, stick to simple words. Stick to stuff that people know. Software engineer, very good. Okay, so this is a good point. Speak engineering. Okay, so what this means is stick to words that are technical. Stick to sentences and share stuff that is that shows that you did something technical. So talk about API calls, talk about latency, talk about databases, talk about Jira tickets, talk about, you know, different vocab that shows that you're actually an engineer and uh, they can get that from your resume, right? So if we go back to this resume uh, and if you read it, you can see included local file system storage to reliably handle five megabytes of location history data. So he didn't like just spam it with buzzwords. His sentences make sense when you read them, but they do have key things like jQuery, Google Maps, APIs, DigitalOcean, IP address, styled components, CSS. So if you parse it, you can see that he's somebody who clearly technically knows what he's doing. All right, so next thing, keep it simple. A resume is meant to be uh, read quickly and scanned quickly, right? So make it, so it's easy to read and you don't have to fluff it up. So even when he worked at these companies, if you actually go look up. So like notice that when he's sharing all his Amazon work that he did, he worked there for over a year. It's very simple. Four bullet points. He worked at Microsoft for literally like three or four years. Five bullet points. So it becomes less impressive 
you'll have the urge to make it way more bullet points, but keep it very simple so it's very easy to read. All right, and uh, here's another thing. Important experience is greater than every experience, okay? So for example, like if you worked at a hair salon uh, and then you worked as a, a Starbucks barista serving coffee, fluffing that shit up will not achieve anything great. But if you actually did IT, talk more about IT because that's much more relevant to you getting a job as a software developer. Why? Because you're sitting at a desk using a goddamn computer and talking to people all day, okay? That's much more relevant than you fucking handing people a macchiato, whatever the fuck, for $10 and translating when they say large to grande or venti or whatever they fucking say, which I never remember. So like, this is more relevant, okay? So this is greater than these other ones. But if you're trying to work as a barista somewhere, then talk more about the Starbucks. Hopefully that should be like common sense, but it's good to just remind yourself of it. So um, that's what he means by it, right? So everyone has a ton of things they could write on their resume, but that doesn't mean they should write the things that stand out mo the more. Uh, there just isn't room for one page for everything. And remember, one page is what Elon Musk's resume looks like. So you have no excuse to have a resume that's longer than one page, unless you're richer than Elon Musk which is very unlikely. And also at that point, why the fuck are you writing a resume? Uh, but uh, last thing that he says, which I think is really good, so let's touch base on that too. Your resume, the total interviews, right? It's the game of not just applications. That's one variable right here, okay? This is, like, this is variable B. But resume quality is also really important, okay? So those, there are two really important variables here. Because if you send, like, bad resumes, you're not going to get, like, here's an extreme, right? Which he says, if you just sent empty blank piece of paper, which is an extreme version of a bad resume, because that's the worst resume you can have, like, just a blank page, you will get zero people to respond regardless of how good you are. And if your resume is really, really, really good, then when you send lots of applications, you're much more likely to get really good replies. But remember, once you max out the resume quality, then you max out the job applications. And what I like to say is if you don't have a job, then your only job should be to look for a job. You should do that like it's your full-time job. You, be, you should be spending 40 hours a week minimum applying for jobs. That's just what you should be doing because you don't have a job right now. So do that and do that relentlessly until you land the job, okay? Um, and there you go. Those are the nine tips for you to improve your resume and have a higher chance of getting a job at a big tech company like Google. Hope you got value out of it. Peace.